Okay, we are here at Sopo Seafood uh, in Knightville in South Portland, uh, which is not the, the first restaurant we've featured in this neighborhood, if you saw our last one. Uh, but this is one of the newest additions. It is a fish market, but also an oyster bar and kind of seafood restaurant all built into one. That makes it really unique. I don't think there's any place that has a full retail operation like this where you can come in and just sit and hang out and have a drink and, you know, I feel like it's one of those things where that I sort of idyllic view of people like, yeah, on the way home, when I stop and get oysters for the family, I just have a glass of champagne while I'm waiting for my oysters. Like, if that were me, there'd be, you know, there would be 12 glasses of champagne and it would end in turmoil and the family would hate me, but I think it would be fine. A lot of people do that, apparently. The menu has basically expanded quite a bit from the beginning already. Initially, I think it was a lot of the oysters and, you know, some limited caviar options and now, you know, there's, as you're gonna see, there's, you know, chowder and lobster rolls. Full drink menu. I've known Matt for a really long time. He was at Brown Trading in Portland, which is a famous fish market there. And that's where we hit it off. And if you've watched My 70s Kitchen, our cooking show, uh, you'll also recognize Sopo Seafood as being one of our suppliers. Whenever I've had too much to drink and overcook some scallops, uh, unfortunately there were beautiful scallops that uh, were provided to us by Sopo. Basically the owners, it's all of their just collective years of experience in this business that makes you trust all of the products and all the you know, connections that have been built up. So it made sense to me to showcase the source of what we've been using and, and cooking with. I feel like we're gonna start with oysters. coming out of Cumberland. You got the Glidden's out of Damariscotta. You got your Blaney points coming out of Yarmouth. Oh, yeah. days. We got those pemmicans, state one in the state, coming out of Damariscotta. Yeah. You got your grindstones and your nonsuch coming out of uh, Scoville. This is really cool because it's a lot of places, I mean, most people do tend to associate oysters here with Damariscotta. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and this is, a, this is actually quite a bit of diversity. Yeah. clean. It's funny that you would actually have to say it, that oysters have to be super, super cold uh, to me. And you wouldn't think you'd have to say that, but after going so many places and like getting oysters and you're like, where have these been sitting? I don't understand. Like, why are these room temperature? That's gross. So this is the ceviche. This has got a little habanero and jalapeno in it. It's a little bit of kick. I like a lot of times, I mean, I like menu that. My default, like, if I were to do oysters at home with just Tabasco and lemon, it's kind of classic. Mm. That's uh, so we just, oh. Can we get to reverse the bottle? But, so we just do a little Tabasco there, and that's all you need. It's, I, some people can go to the, like, oh, it's like all the oyster night. I'm gonna go eat 40 oysters myself. That's not really how I roll. I'm happy with six. Um, that was the brinestone. Yeah. They're really cool though. They like, they tumble and they tumble them. Yeah, they almost so look like a West like Coast like oyster with a deep, deep cup exactly. like that. Yeah. So what they do is they knock the edge off. It gets it to grow that way oh, versus so out that so way. They do actually grow it. So it's just been, it's been handled a lot. Like, like he gets like 300 a week, you know? So it's always cool to have them on the bar here. It's super, really cool. They're super rare. Well, see, that's, those are the perks right yeah. there. That's, and Pemiquid's sort of like, I guess you could say the gold standard. Yeah. Look at how pretty that is too. That's the fun part. You want to get all that oyster lecca in there. We were talking earlier, and I were discussing the, um, and Justin were discussing the lighting in here being nice and bright and it's like, I think that's great. You don't want to usually you don't want to buy seafood in the dark. I think that's usually a bad idea. And also just, you know, it just kind of gives you the impression that everybody is paying a lot of attention. Thank you very much. Yeah. So Every good fish house has to have some good chow. 
They should. And actually, if they have shitty chowder, you shouldn't buy fish then. Tony, go, yeah, good point. Yeah, you can't put together a, yeah. But this looks exceptionally good. There was this, what's on top of those little flakes? That's, um, that's dulse. Oh, cool. Yep. And so it's grown right here in Maine um, and by our good friends uh, Ocean's Balance. So uh, chowder personifies what we do here, which is just um, good fish served simply. Uh, we want people to come in and um, um, try our uh, bites off our menu, and the more people we can get cooking fish at home, um, better for everybody. Uh, oh, yeah, this looks, this looks delicious. Oh yeah, the dulces are really nice. Huh? You know, nothing new with New England style chowder, and it's one of those things that shouldn't be shouldn't have too much going on. Like the, the, I like the slight changes with the dulce. You know, it's just enough to not change the whole characteristic of the chowder, but to add a little extra to it. Again, if you go to a fish market and they offer chowder and the chowder isn't very good, you should go buy your fish someplace else. Got uh, smoked seafood going on. Oh, good. Uh, Let's. Yeah, a smoked seafood plate, of course, cold smoked salmon, smoked bay scallops, and the little shrimp, Yep. known as Maine shrimp. Of course, they all went to Canada. What's the status with Maine shrimp right now? So a lot of people thought that um, the reason that fishermen weren't getting to the stocks was because of uh, overfishing, and um, there's definitely some truth to that. But there's also research vessels that go out every year. But a big reason the shrimp aren't out there is water temperature. Um, that they've moved to colder waters, uh, that they need that uh, a lower temperature for spawning. Um, so there is still a Canadian commercial fishery because um, uh, the shrimp have relocated. Perfect level of smoke on these. Just now, caviar here for you. Now, I feel like our, a lot of our relationship is built on caviar. Absolutely. I just like to say that. I don't know if that's true, but let's just, I think that's a beautiful thing, having a relationship Absolutely. built mostly yeah, on caviar. caviar. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It can, hold, it can certainly keep things interesting. Absolutely. So you're looking at Siberian, yep. Spoonbill, yep. Smoked Trout Rail, and then Classic White Surgeon from California. Okay, so this, so this is like a lot of times you see like the Snake River and stuff like that. Snake River area. is a form in Idaho that does That's the same Idaho, species. Okay, yeah. This is actually stolt out in California. Yep. We, we source it from a bunch of different places wherever we can get the best quality. Fine. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in here. So this is, the, should I go in this order? Yeah, I Does mean, it matter? Or? I don't think it matters. Okay. I mean, the smoked trout roll probably has the most flavor, so. Yeah, so maybe I'll start with the, the spoon bill. People that really like caviar are looking for a larger grain because it's a, it's, an, it's a fish egg, right? Mm -hmm. Which is going to be full of fat. So the bigger the egg, the more fat in it. So it's like, you know, if you if you think about it like a, like any other chicken egg, you know, it's omega threes, it's protein, it's salt, it's all those delicious things that your brain loves, right? Four hundred dollars an ounce versus seventy five dollars an ounce. What are the differentiations there? A lot of that, I think there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the caviar game. I think we've tried to take a really blue collar approach. Yours is super affordable and it's, it's delicious. It's just straightforward because- Yeah, your Ocetra that I've had was, was as good as things I've paid three times as much for. All right, where are we going now? We talk talked to about uh, tastings and uh, ah. just, just showing off what people can bring home. So we have the three spoon caviar tasting and then we have our three spoon seafood tasting. Uh, so on those spoons you have uh, Maine bluefin uh, to tartare, uh, we've got uni served with a little bit of olive oil, and then you've got uh, piquito crab meat on a little bit of crumb fresh. Super simple, super tasty, definitely tasting the product. Green light, game on. Really good uni like that is just, it's, it's just a texture, it kind of just, it just melts really quickly in your mouth and it's really mild, it's sweet, it's really sweet. And so the olive oil on there, Gave it or even rounded out the texture, made it even a little bit creamier because uh, it's already pretty creamy. But yeah, when he doesn't, it just needs a little olive oil, a little lemon. Like, you don't, and occasionally, like, I do like it when they toss it with in like pasta. Uh, that's an interesting, it adds a flavor, but I mean, really, I want to eat it raw. Oh, that's what, yeah. So if you buy uni to go, that's where you're taking off.
That's really delicious too. And it's nice because it, I mean, the texture of that is like super rich, almost like like a like a belly, like a toro, but it's the leaner kind of the tuna and super flavorful. Crab fresh mustache, there are worse things to have. So this is um, and you've got is it butter on, on this? This is usually it's usually the eternal argument, right? Whether butter or mayo. So lobster roll. Ooh, nice and warm. Yeah, this is. Yeah. That bun is delicious. Like soft. Texture is really good. The pieces of lobster are appropriately sized. I mean, if you put a lot of melted butter on anything, who's going to be like, I don't like that now? I mean, of course it's delicious. I think really the bun is the big part of it. If it's properly like toasted and it's a, this bun is very classic. Yeah, it is. It, it makes it. Everybody says. Mmm. Mm. Mm. We have our uh, sopo bowl. Look at this. So you've got some salmon. You got pickled cucumber, wakame salad, avocado, some edamame, some uh, radishes, carrots, and you got spicy mayo. It's a little bit of uh, yum yum sauce. Look at that. We got a yum yum sauce. Little lashings of yum yum. Yeah, no, I hate spicy mayo. It's the worst. <laughs> it's kind of like a little like a poke bowl kind of, but. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's this place is kind of a choose your own adventure. So if you're shopping for coming in buying fish to make for dinner, you might as well stop and have an entire dinner by yourself before you go home and make dinner for somebody else. I feel like that makes sense. Um, worked through the progression here uh, at Sopo. We did the smoked seafood, did the caviar, the chowder. I mean, everything's delicious. What else do you want? You, have, you can see where everything comes from. You can know it's all good. There's not much else you can really say outside of a fish market being really good and the, the food is really fresh. And I think it's delicious. And I'm Joe Riccio, and this is Food Coma on the Road.